The National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children here in the United Kingdom has warned the coronavirus lockdown creates a high risk, the highest risk uh, to children uh, of online child abuse. Uh, the children's charity has warned they are preparing for a surge in online abuse. They say an increase in the loneliness of young people stuck at home, paired with more time spent online, is the perfect storm. With me to discuss is Andy Burrows, he's head of child safety online policy at the NSPCC and also I'm joined by Conservative MP Damien Hines, the former Conservative Secretary for Education. He's also a member of the Digital Culture, Media and Sport Select Committee. Welcome to you both. Um, Andy Burrows, if I could start with you, what sort of evidence are you seeing um, that there has been this growth in online abuse? Uh, good evening. Well, as you say, we are concerned about the potential really for a, a perfect storm when it uh, when it comes to online child abuse. And there's three factors really that are driving that. First of all, we know that the tech firms, uh, many of them have fewer human moderators. Uh, they've had to suspend a lot of their existing moderation activity. That's at precisely the time that because all of us are at home, there's uh, a, a real surge in demand for using social networks and gaming sites. Um, secondly, obviously, children are at home. And we've released new figures today which, uh, uh, which demonstrate real concerns about a particular group of children, uh, children who are feeling lonely. And that's going to be more children, uh, obviously, right now, as, uh, as children aren't at school. They're, 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 they're away from their friendship uh, networks. Those children are twice as likely to have sent, received, or been asked to send sexual content uh, to an adult. Um, and thirdly, we know, unfortunately, that offenders are seeing the current uh, uh, crisis as an opportunity to exploit. The National Crime Agency uh, and Europol have both warned that they're seeing uh, organised offenders looking to uh, exploit the situation to groom children. And there's been a real spike in demand for child abuse imagery. Damien Hines, great cause for concern there. And the problem for many parents, myself included, is that you try and entertain your children for as long as you can, but inevitably they want to talk to their friends. Inevitably they're going to turn to social media and go to their bedrooms to do it. Yeah, of course, children are spending longer online now um, for perfectly legitimate reasons, like for, you know, online learning. And we've welcomed, of course, the opportunities the internet has brought us in this crisis. But this research that Andy's talking about from the NSPCC reminds us of the dangers on the internet as well. And to hear that, you know, organised uh, criminals, child abusers are planning on using this time, of course, a time when we're in lockdown to protect health and life, that they are thinking of actively using this is, I mean, it's sad and it's sickening, but alas, not surprising because these people will do anything, take advantage of any uh, opportunity they can find uh, to carry out these uh, terrible uh, these terrible things. And so it's really incumbent on all of us to be very aware on behalf of our children. Now, schools are doing great work, by the way, as well, in helping children to understand what those threats are and what to do if they feel uncomfortable or if they know somebody who themselves might feel uncomfortable. And so, Andy Burrows, what, what does the NSPCC do in a situation like this? How are you preparing to respond? Um, well, we're doing several things. First of all, we're working with government and the tech firms. We're asking the tech firms now to step up to the plate. Um, unfortunately, we know that years of tech firms really failing to get on top of safety risks on their sites means that uh, they're not as prepared as they could be right now. But we're also working to support parents. So we've got great resources that are available on our NetAware site. So if you're a parent, you can go on there and learn more about uh, a lot of the most popular apps and, uh, apps and games that your children will be using right now. And using more of uh, but we're also there for children as well so uh, our child line service is there for for any child who has had something bad or uncomfortable happen to them online uh, we're there on the phone 0800 1111 in the uk and online to support any child who's who's struggling right now uh, it is a, an issue that the bbc is focused on for for, for for several years damien hines this issue that social media companies aren't doing enough to protect children Yes, so we want, I want social media companies to do more across the range, actually, of online harms, of which, you know, child abuse uh, is, at the, is, is at the worst end. But there are other, plenty of other things as well. I think in this particular crisis, the, the message to the social media platforms must be clear, is that, you know, you, if, if you've got a shortage of moderators working on this, then you need to redeploy people and there'll be other you know, other lines of business, ad revenues and so on will be lower. But this must be absolutely top priority to make sure that these platforms are doing everything they can to try and help to keep our children and our young people safe. 
parents obviously have a, a role in this, Andy Burroughs. Do, what sort of advice would you have for them? So our advice really is um, just to try and have regular conversations with your child, with your children. We know that right now tech is going to be a lifeline. It's a lifeline for all of us as adults. It's a lifeline for children right now to stay in touch with their friends. And the key here, I think, is just to try and have those regular conversations. So ask about which apps about which games your child is 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 using um just try and take a regular interest we recommend that as opposed to something like overly supervising overly monitoring what your child is doing because actually though that might make us feel better very often that can be counterproductive so just try and have regular conversations make clear that if something bad does happen to your child uh, then they know that they're there uh, that you're there for them I suppose as well, uh, Damien, uh, schools have a role to play in this as well. I mean, I, I know uh, when I talk, think about my children, the schools are directing them to certain resources and steering them away from perhaps some of the more malicious content online. Yeah, and trying to help them to be resilient. I mean, there, there's always multiple aspects of this. We need to reduce the you know, the flow of online harm and, and uh, you know, stop the, the perpetrators doing what they do. We also need to help children to be uh, to be resilient, to be able to protect themselves, and to feel comfortable to report something, and to know that there are services like uh, Childline that they can that they can turn to. But you're right; schools have been doing amazing work, actually, in uh, you know, in a, in a very child-friendly way, uh, helping children to understand that the internet is both good and bad, and not everybody is who they you know seem to be, who they pretend to be, and making sure they do know what to do. Uh, if something is wrong. Yeah, good advice. Um, I should ask you, Andy, before I let you go, how is the NSPCC such an important charity for protecting children? How are you coping in, in, in very difficult, difficult circumstances? Well, um, we've adapted. We've um, uh, done a real sterling effort in the last few weeks to make sure that our that our really essential services, our childline service for children and young people, for our helpline for anyone who has concerns about a vulnerable child right now, that those services can uh, continue to function. But it's a really difficult time. It's a really difficult time for everyone in the charity sector with the funding pressures, obviously, uh, that are there. And uh, our message right now really is that um, you know our mission is to be there for every child, and right now that's more important than ever. Well, it's very good work you do. Andy Burroughs, it's good to have you on the programme. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to Damien Hines as well. Thank you both.